Good morning, everyone. I'd like to I'd like to welcome you to the Long Range Planning Committee meeting of February the 9th of 2024. Um, our first item this morning is something that's slightly different than we've done in past meetings, but we are going to start to actually have a roll call. <clears throat> so I'm not sure who's going to do that, but I will be happy to. I'll let you. <laughs> Thank you. Alan Paul. Here. Rick Shanae. Here. Peter Freilinger. Here. Marvin Gates. Here. Robin Saunders. Here. Uh, Portia Hirschman. Here. And Robert Odlin. And he, he let me know he would not be here. And we also have our planning board liaison, Rachel Hendrickson. Here. And our council liaisons, Jean Marie Katarina and John Anderson. And you are both here. We're both here. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, I, in point of uh, disclosure, the, the committee knows that I represent the owners of the Beach Ridge Speedway. Yes. I'm now representing the developer uh -huh. of the Beach Ridge Speedway. And I don't think there's anything on our agenda that specifically relates to that property, but I just wanted to make sure the committee understood that I represent okay. that party. And if something comes up that I feel is inappropriate for me to just fit in, I'll keep my mouth closed. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my point of order as well, since I'm on the planning board and at some point uh, they are consist they come before us, um, I would have to run out of the room if somebody started to talk about it, um, really, just in to ensure that there's um, no ex parte information. Public meeting? Hmm? Yeah, I said, isn't this a public meeting? I'm not sure you need to. Um, you. I I would do that anyway because it it could be construed as a party because uh, yeah. that Karen is yeah. wisely nodding her right. head. So I think that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> the wise what the wise not. Not. Yeah. Of course. the wise moment was not. Well, an reading. So exactly. my question is: Yes, this is an open meeting or yes. a public meeting. Yes. Do we have to have the door open? Yes, uh, technically, we technically have, I think we the building do. is locked, and so I have my cell phone number on the downstairs. Okay, um, so I'm, if I answer my phone, I'm not being rude. Okay, um, so that's all we can do, and I think we have the door closed for the people for people the other nearby. people. And it's only... glass. And it... So, having said that, do we have uh, any public online that we know of at this point? No, no, all right, thank you. Um, <laughs> We do have a quorum, number one, and number two, all five of our voting members are present today. So, Portia, I'm sorry, we're not going to bump you up to a voting member this morning. Quick question. Is there any update on Marvin and my reappointment? No. There is not. Okay. It has not gone to the reappointments. Got a meeting on uh, Wednesday. Side. We're meeting Wednesday. Yeah, no. I'm on that committee. <laughs> I thought I four read one. something about that, but yes, either <laughs> you're not. not I'm sure. Right. All right, I'll move on. I'm my brain's spinning here. Next item on our agenda this morning is review of the minutes of January 12, 2024. Any discussion regarding the minutes before we move to or have somebody move to approve them? I move to approve. Okay, is there a second, Rick? Thank you. Um, and again, I'll ask for discussion. Seeing none, uh, all in favor? And I believe that's five of us, no opposed, so passed unanimously. Um, review our work plan for 2024. Autumn? Yes. So I wanted to take this opportunity. I think that some of you have probably um, feel like we keep working on the same thing for a bit and are we really focused? And and we have been working on the same, same types of items for quite some time. So I wanted to put this uh, in front of you just to remind you uh, what we're working on, what we're working towards. And so I just included some information from the um, town ordinances about this committee and how it's made up and what our responsibilities are. 
And ultimately, you are overseeing the implementation of the comp plan and you work on any amendments to the zoning ordinance and other land use. And so that can be quite a few things. Um, and what we've focused on for the since I've been here, so it's been about a year and a half, is this vision three where we're trying to simplify our zoning ordinance. And it's the consolidation effort that we are consolidating some of zoning. We have um, our site plan standards, our commercial design standards that were approved in, 19, I think, 1991. So we're putting them all together. And that's what I call the ordinance consolidation effort. And so that's what we've been doing for quite some time. We are getting to a great point where we're almost wrapped up with a lot of it. And so this is what um, we've been, this, is, this screen shows you where we've gotten to. So the lighting standards, uh, sustainability committee got those done. Those have been approved. So that portion has been consolidated. The landscaping got a little slowed down in October, went to ordinance committee, but it's going to ordinance committee again on Valentine's Day, fingers crossed. And which one? Landscape. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's on the... Um, and so that one hopefully will get through. And that was a big one. That included screening, storage, and parking, um, the plant list that conservation helped work on. And then we also have, there's some other side uh, efforts going on with some other committees, but I just wanted you all to be aware of. There's environmental standards that the Conservation Commission has been working on. Those were recommended for moving, movement to the Ordinance Committee in March. And so those are out there. And what we've been focusing on for a long time are the architectural standards and site layout. So we went on our tour last June, how, <laughs> how time flies. Um, and we've gone back and forth with it. Um, so architectural standards, and we've talked about that. And then we go to site layout. And then last time we went back to architectural standards. Um, so what, and we'll get into this with the next item, but what I'm really proposing from this group is that we look at what we've got so far, which is ma the majority is a cleanup, a little bit of tweaking here and there for our site layout and architectural standards. I recommend we wrap that up and move it forward to complete that consolidation effort. And then um, in my CIP budget, I'm working on um, adding the village standards that we've been talking about. And that would be led by an outside firm. And we could have, you know, we've talked about having some charrettes with an architect. And so we could really get into that and some, do some work that's really beyond staff capacity. Uh, and so we could focus. So what I would ask is that um, if you all were on board with that, we could pick the village that we wanted to work on first. We had talked about Dunstan, Oak Hill, North Scarborough, and a couple of others. And then I can put that in my CIP. It's It was in my CIP for this year anyway, so it won't be a surprise. I have I have it for four years. But then you all would basically be the steering committee for that. <coughs> work. Um, and so that's where I would like to go. And then I would like to say, let's start on parking standards next. Um, I think that's a real focus. There's been some national changes in parking and how things then again, we have a new cafe that just opened that still has a parking problem. So um, I think I think it's really time for us to look at our parking and we can um, uh, take that up, hopefully in the summer would be my goal. And then we could wrap up this year with signs and then we would be done with our ordinance consolidation project. And then um, for commercial. For commercial design success. <laughs> yes. But that whole old document would be completely right. dissolved into our existing mm -hmm. site plan standards. Um, we'd be at a really good spot, I think, moving forward. So that's just a little bit. I wanted to show you where we've been, why we're there, what I would propose that we we do moving forward, and then maybe we could have some discussion about that. That seems like a plan, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I, I hope that the committee takes some time also to look at the goals we just approved from the council perspective, which just happened Wednesday. So print off the press. But I think there's a lot of stuff in there that this committee either is informed, consulted on. I don't know if there's anything in here that the committee feels strongly that they would really own and run to ground. The one that that I think we were thinking was specific for this committee was the one around the board connector and understanding how that could impact land use. So that one to me was one that I think we specifically discussed in our full workshop. It didn't get called out, but 
there's other things in here too that I assume this committee will want to play a role in. And I, I had to leave that meeting early because I had, you they were, the you guys were running over. Yeah. And the, since I'm the one who lives up in that end yeah. of the neck of the woods, <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what they're talking about with land use because that's, I mean, the way the connector is going to run, that's been um, mm -hmm. out there for a long time. Um, so anyway, I, so I was just curious. Yeah, where, more, right now, like it, the, the answer could be we do nothing and keep it the same, or it could be does this connector provide opportunities for us to reconsider what that current land use is, and if so, how? And again, I think that's yeah. a discussion that, that's probably worth having just to make yeah. sure. And I think, um, and the way I see it is the discussion to me would be, because there's only two exits. One is into the um, Running Hill Road, which was already rezoned in order, mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm not sure, is that, in, I'm not sure if that little piece on Smiling Hill Farmer Scarborough or not. I'd, I'd have to look at that. Maybe that, maybe uh, if you all like this approach, next time I can bring you the different villages, and that would be one approach. Mm -hmm. That might be the first so thing we do an outside. Yep. That might be one we consider. Uh, and then we could prioritize which focus area we'd want to work on first with the consultant. Mm -hmm. yeah. want to do it. Okay. I, I don't want to make this conversation go in that direction, <laughs> but. Definitely, I think it's something that we'll look at, but I what I'd like to do is focus on what we're trying to do today right. and not get off on right. a, a rabbit hole. Yep. If that's all right. Yeah. I okay. just I just want to make sure the committee takes some time to absorb our goals and yeah. <clears throat> how best the committee can support them this year. Yeah, and I and I have a feeling we'll be brought into it as well as we have more discussions with Gorm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, it's going to just go to it anyway. So, okay. Uh, anything else? Oh, Peter. A couple things. Um, <clears throat> first off, um, I didn't have a chance to see the planning workshop or whatever that took place for the town council yesterday or, or recently. So um, just as a side note, if, if it does affect us, I'd appreciate our town council representatives giving us a, an overview at some point. Um, or just a, 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 I can send you the goal. Yeah, that would be great. They're yeah. adopted now. And, and, um, and, and again, if they are important enough, then you need an agenda item for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 10 minutes to have them um, have our council discuss that. That'd be one. The second thing is, and I know, Autumn, that this is uh, much of what Vision 3 and our work has done for you is to simplify the zoning agreements. But I don't want to lose the fact that Vision 3 was not about simplifying our ways, it was about Making sure brings the support, the diversity and characteristics of existing and emerging neighborhoods, centers, and open space. <clears throat> and I think much of this memo, unfortunately, focuses on ordinance simplification. And that's, in, in, uh, you'll excuse the word, an inappropriate emphasis. I know it, it's what it's done for you and your team, but we cannot lose sight of the fact that the comprehensive plan was not about ordinance simplification. Sure, and the and here's my perspective. I can't fix anything if I don't know what I have. Sure. So you mm -hmm. can't change it until you clean your house, and that's the whole purpose. I totally agree. This yeah, but that, not the end goal at all. It's just simply to figure out we have contradicting ordinances and things that we are continually working for and working through the planning process. And so this is just, hey, what do we actually have? And now where can we go so we get a good baseline? And eliminating yeah, those contradictions. This won't end conflicts. on the Vision 3 okay, it, it, it's, good to, it's good to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. It's just that that's not what this memo says. Well, this so, memo is just about your work plan for this year. Gotcha. And I, again, our work plan for this year is always grounded in what the vision is. Mm -hmm. Even though the first step of that is ordinance. Right. All right. So the, the, it would be good to have the memo emphasize that fact. Okay. So point taken. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Sure, Just a, a question about them. Do you um, envision us tackling the, <clears throat> the <clears throat> list of uses um, yes. during each of the, <clears throat> sorry, uh, during each of the neighborhood or areas, the villages, or is that going to sort of be done universally? We could do it. 
Probably it might be more appropriate in the village because they all have different zoning. Yeah. Or we could do it universally, but I, I would see it being easier okay. chunks at yeah. a time. The, the useless is one of the things mm -hmm. that I would probably go to the SEDCO board with mm -hmm. and get some of their feedback on on that, that simplification or you know, sure. reordering of it. And I and I think that'd be part of that village process, like writing that RFP. Okay. So what I was intending to do, if you all were comfortable with this approach, I would put together a draft RFP for next time for what we would be looking for, and then I can hopefully get approval at budget time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put in a plug. But we would need to <laughs> we would need to define what area of town was our focus to. I think I, this committee is great for me to be able to use that for our work, and that would be our work for really a lot of next year and then the side things that come up but that would be our focus getting through that we're, we're relatively strict with farms in terms of our discussion of those that came up right when we came out of the, uh, of the comprehensive plan and you know, talk about sort of the review of the rf or the the r2 districts especially um is that for 2026 is it for later on or do you envision as a planning sort of process that LRPC wouldn't be doing that. It'd be some other area or... What are you thinking about? Yeah, we just talked about the idea that, that there were a lot of comments about... And, and a lot of this related, not to Vision <clears> 3, <throat> per se, um, but the, uh, the, the the land use patterns um, and the marsh and things like that, that are the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat today. Um, are the... Uh, <laughs> are the... Um, are the design standards and the zoning ordinances for the R2, the, the residential and the RF districts in line with what the comprehensive plan says about where land use is and, and, and that. So kind of a general review of the of those um, residential districts and with, all, with an eye towards what we said through the other vision statements on, on uh, especially vision one and vision two. So uh, I don't have any, so the design standards don't apply to residential districts. Yeah, I'm not thinking design, yeah. it's oh. more, more than zoning. The zoning itself. themselves. Yeah. So I do have a note on here that I would like us if we get an opportunity to talk about residential districts, because we have, and this may be different, but this is something that's yeah, on think... our, we have a lot of districts in town that are say R2 that are not in compliance with R2. Exactly, and, yeah. and this came up the other day. Um, we have a gentleman that owns three lots in the Maple Avenue area and but because he can't subdivide it into three lots because they don't meet R2 standards, but all three of them meet Maple Avenue standards. Yeah. And yeah. so it, there's some stuff. disconnect between yeah. the reality and the actual zoning district. So I do have that um, kind of as a, I'd like to get to it this year. Okay. Um, Cause it, and I think that's probably gets to it. The, the R2, <clears throat> the R, R2 and the RF districts are giant sure and yes. they're not differentiated and exactly. we talked about the comprehensive some, plans that maybe it's appropriate some levels yeah. maybe yeah exactly. and that, yes. it's really more that vision to the future yes of yes said. that so. is i've included it because i think <gasps> i'd like to get to it if we can okay yeah. great can you set a comment sorry for the yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, by, by the way i may refer to you as bill today that's fine so, <laughs> Just, just in case that occurs, I'm just. I'll, I'll respond to anything. Um, so just to piggyback on what you're saying, I think I might say the same thing you just said. When you go through that village process, it sounds like to look at each village. Mm -hmm. I think thinking about certain things that are in the comp plan, like conservation, preservation of the marsh. Um, I know I was at one of the um, library uh, sessions where they're talking about marsh preservation. Mm -hmm. And they shared, um, the experts shared some things that we could do in our zoning that would actually allow for better marsh migration that we just don't have today. So I think there's things like that that may come up. Um, and then the other piece that I would just ask for help with is with affordable and workforce housing. Like, where do we, like, is there a better way in our zoning to be more specific in terms of where we want that and how we want that? Because I know we have it in the zoning today where where we want it to be or a lot for certain uses, but I don't really know as a town like what we want to do to direct that even more um, specifically. Uh, one of the things too in our goals is revisiting our TIP policy and we talked about doing an affordable housing TIP. So is there an affordable housing TIP district in certain zones that would be eligible or that we want to prioritize? So those are just, to me, two important things that um, I think will help the council goals, but hopefully fit within the 
the work plan. I think so. I think we could work all that out. Okay. okay. Item four. Okay, right, Marvin. Marvin's got a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, comment. Sorry, okay. Comment. Maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe questioning or something. Um, very nice having the counselors here. We have didn't have council representation for almost a year, so uh, and I'm not picking on anybody or congratulating anybody. It's just one back. Well, so get <laughs> that, that, that's my comment. And following up on what you said, Peter, um, this is a general take on our work over the last year and what we think about doing in the coming year. Of uh, the granularity that we've been focused on, and this ties into the counselors being here because the counselors had all the context, the worldly view. We've been working in such a granular way that what I hear you saying, Peter, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't mean to put words in your mouth at all, uh, is that we've lost sight of some of the terrain on which we're operating, meaning long-range planning, it hasn't felt long-range for about a year. It's, I know you see it as long-range because you can see the end, you know, the forest for the trees. Um, I think we've probably lost a little bit of that view, the forest for the trees. And I would ask, this is my question, uh, is it possible to have both, meaning to work in a granular way on what, you know, here we go again, and absolutely, on the architect architectural design standards, and even though we only have 90 minutes, can we earmark a half hour, 20 minutes uh, of a meeting uh, to keep the ball rolling in the bigger picture way while we still tackle these again, I'll say it more granular That would be my request. And, and Martin, <clears throat> you were perhaps a little bit more direct than I was, but you oh. captured the spirit of what I was trying to say. Oh, okay. So thank you very much. I agree. <laughs> and just to be fair, I'm tired of looking at it too, because I could write it. <laughs> no, I could write it and wrap it up and be done. It's, um, it's, but it's this not is, about weariness. Yeah, I think it's about what are we doing. In a series, in a right, in a but fundamental way. This is what this committee is charged with. You are right. you're charged with amendments to the zoning ordinance, even when they get tedious. Right. And what you're doing is really important. And I know One it's range, the, but yeah. it's really important. The so lighting, is the other though. I would say. I, and I totally and I think so we're I'm, almost done. And I guess I wanted to show you this that we're really close. I think you might be missing what I'm saying. No, I I totally understand what you're saying. We've talked about it before. I think you're you want to talk about philosophically like where we're going and how we're what we need to do for our long range visions. Um, we need to have those discussions about where density might be appropriate. Just, just how we're keep growing. that ball yeah. rolling at the same time as we're keeping. Yes. What you're saying here, rolling. And not, those things. Not an either or. And those things are happening. I think that's why I wanted to include, you know, environmental standards. Mm -hmm. I think you would be really pleased and really su surprised once you see them. They're really moving forward some goals in the comp plan too. So it's, you know, it is. It's an hour and a half, one month. Um, once a month and so well you make us feel useful I you're very you know. useful to me and i think i'm really excited to uh, to get this finished uh, it's probably been 20 years in the works and i don't think anybody has ever tackled it because it is so yeah. detail driven but well, we're so close i think the next the village projects will you'll start to see some movement and some excitement and oh this is what we're doing if we focus on running hill Look what we're doing yeah. for the future of the town. So I think we're, we're really getting there. Just stay with me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. No, no, no. But I will say that if you look at some of our last meetings, part of our problem has been that we've gone down rabbit holes that we didn't necessarily <laughs> have to go down. And I'll take some responsibility for that because I'm supposed to be kind of helping to guide the conversation. But obviously, I need you, all of your help as well so that we don't do that. So the more we can stay focused, the more results we'll produce. So having said that, uh, item number four, chapter 405B, site plan standards and commercial design standards merger, update, 
slash layout standards architectures discuss potential for 2025 budget initiative autumn. So we've already talked about the potential for the 2025 budget initiative moving forward with this and then adding that village uh, plan and sort of merge that with your work <laughs> plan. Um, so really these two items, they're the last drafts with, again, the highlights show what we changed since the last meeting. Um, this one was the last meeting on this was in June. The site layout was in October, I believe. And so we've been kicking this around for some time. What I would suggest or a request is that we could go through them pretty quickly. We haven't um, done anything super substantial to these, which is more of that cleanup. And I would just say, let's move forward with these and close the book on that and move to the next thing. <laughs> to Marvin's point. Um, so again, I'll remind you as you go through, the green is what's proposed. So purple exists, it's in our site plan review ordinance. The blue is in our commercial design standards and green is the new stuff that we've come up with or the tweaking. And so essentially it's just a reordering and consolidation on trying to make sense of um, the different things that we have in place. So like architectural design standards, these would just apply to commercial, multifamily, and then I want to add mixed use structures to that. Um, so it'd be renovations, reconstruction. So that is new. And then we get into, um, it doesn't apply to individual single and two family dwellings and accessory buildings. And it also doesn't apply to light industrial or industrial zone properties. So these base standards. So then you get into, um, some general standards. This is just the fluffy planner language that things are supposed to be pretty. <laughs> and then there's a definition section that I'd like to add once, once we're done, identifying words, um, architectural plans required, same language, you have to have an architect do it. And so the front facade and building entrance, again, you'll see most of this is blue, so it's existing. Um, we just put, instead of building entrance, we put public entrance. So you're not doing these things in the back. Um, we took off, let's see. So that's just simplified. The transparency windows and doors is combined. Again, it's the 40% transparency. So no changes really. Articulation is all existing. This is the 100 foot horizontal foot and some changes required. And then we have the corner structure language. Um, again, for the most part, existing materials. We did a bit. We took off, um, I think we added, let's see. I guess we didn't do anything. I think we were okay with materials. Oh, I think we did something in the business part. So colors, uh, this is all existing information but again it's just organized and and again to the point of the village standard so this is our base standard it just applies across the board and then we get into um we just it's all just i'm cleaned up but then we get into these placeholders down at the end for additional requirements and so these are reserved sections and we can add any section we want to to this and so i'd like to put them as additional requirements and reserve them for future so we continue to work on them once this gets adopted. Um, but I think you can see that for the majority of this work, it's just cleanup and reorganization with a little bit of um, changing a few words or just really articulating what we mean. So this one is the architectural standards. I have a question. Mm -hmm. and I yeah, so do I. Don't want to miss things. Huh? But uh, I'm going to ask this question. What the heck do you mean by New England, traditional New England? I mean, I know what's mm -hmm. meant by that. But if I were coming here from Texas or Arizona or Oklahoma or California, I'd be like, and how do you define And how do you define I mean, there's no, is there a Definition somewhere? Well, that would be that could be something that we define. Okay. It's already yeah. in the ordinance mm -hmm. now. So. Yeah. Well, that's why yeah. I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's been a, a something we've talked about a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I because I and you know 
Yeah, it starts right out. What so page? traditional New England examples, right. page okay. one. Right. And, and maybe, then it's in a couple um, of other places. I'd like to offer to add traditional and contemporary New England examples. Hmm. I'd like right. to put the say, contemporary. Was great. And then yeah. what I think will happen is as we do each of these village standards, we'll go, okay, Oak Hill, it hmm. looks like this. And so we want gables, we want clapboard shingles, right. okay. we want those things. Right. Running Hill, we want it to be really contemporary. <laughs> we want metal and wood and things. So... If I just add that word, I think we're just for because these are the base standards. Um, I think contemporary will do it, and then we can sort of tweak it as we get more granular with special areas. Is it Is granular that... in ordinance? I don't yeah, know. Oh, yes, I should yeah. know, but I don't. It can get down. Okay. Yeah. If if we do a village district and we want it to look a certain way, you can be more specific. So this is just the okay. high level. That was just my. This is kind of like yeah. everybody's got to wear pants and a shirt in the meeting, right? <laughs> and then this group has to wear pink shirts, and this group wears blue shirts. Wear you know what I mean? And so right now, this <laughs> is just the everybody's got to do these basic things right. to be a scarf. And, and okay, that's kind of I was just asking that. And just... It's, yeah. And to your point, that's why we did the field trip last June was mm -hmm. to begin to identify particular building mm -hmm. and I wasn't on long range locations yeah. to say, okay, is this it or is this it? Because right. we were really struggling with exactly because that question. That one isn't it? Not that I'm saying I like <laughs> it, but some of the new contemporary architecture that's showing up Portland looks like crap, in my opinion. But well, is that going to be part of the new England vernacular? Good. You know, <laughs> so. And, and, and yeah, exactly. And I'm not sure our job is to regulate uh, purely regulate aesthetics. That right. Well. Um, so I, I think the approach that we're taking on this is good. Um, and and I, I trust the process as we go to the village level to have consistency within the villages. And then again, as we look at the residential and um, RF zoning later on, and 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 potentially consider standards for designs in those areas. Um, which might be appropriate as we consider the fabric of that. Um, we'll, we'll go through a similar effort. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable. Well, I think the, the, pardon me. Oh, no, yeah, I, I just have a question on the um, additional requirements. Um, how about North Scarborough? Are we <laughs> because this. Riley. <laughs> well, no, no, we're, we're, we now yeah. have an aroma Joe's. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and right. so is that, that's yeah, more can... and more both commercial and village yes. oriented. Well, right. that yeah, one. I think that's a good one because it, you're right. And there's a, there are a number of zones within there. There's a light right. industrial zone. There's, there's a bunch going right. on up there. So, yeah. Yeah. And right now it's just paperly, paperly. And, and years and years ago, um, when the Gorham connector first came up, yay, ten thousand years ago, um, part of the meetings and what came out of the meetings at that point, and I'm I'm talking twenty twenty five years ago here, um, was the sense of you know if we could get all the traffic off from one fourteen twenty two, blah blah blah. To make that more village looking, which was that New England vernacular <laughs> type of thing, this is what they were talking mm -hmm. about back at that point. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, I can add those definitely to the reserve. Yeah, and there's could. a few others. So, I, mean, I do think when if the Gorham, mm -hmm. the Gorham goes, when Gorham goes, when? that's going to allow <laughs> more activity there. And, and we need. Because it won't be the traffic center right. anymore. It could have a whole new feel. And we'll have to do things too. But again, this is way beyond. But like lowering the speed limit, whatever. So people aren't saying, "Oh, I'm. I don't want to pay the toll to go on the form connector. It'll take them forever, even longer than it does now to go cut through there." But I'm speaking way ahead. Of you. Um, it may be helpful to um, get Jean Marie and John to summary of the tour because it had all the pictures in sure. it that we did mm -hmm. okay. no, I, mean, I wasn't on the tour well that's what i mean the summary of yeah. the tour that was done has yeah. a lot of oh to get it to us so, yeah, <laughs> yeah get it to you guys as we were trying to yeah. and so, this idea of new england and what it means has been with us since i've been on the committee yeah. right. uh i think so it wouldn't hurt i don't think to Right. Uh, I'm not saying take a vote or something like mm -hmm. that, but there aren't a lot of choices. Do you strike it 
and we just don't have it, do you make it more again grand? I mean, is everybody Define. happy with it yeah. as it is? And can we move on uh, in its very general outlook, or does it need tweaking? Or should we tweak it in the village area and leave it as it is so we can sort of same thing from 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 uh, what Martin suggested. And I actually asked um, uh, Rachel, does having that in here give you on the planning board some yeah. degrees of freedom to push back on designs or push back aesthetically on things? Or it it allows us um, to push back on what I would call outliers. Okay. Uh, understanding that the New England vernacular. Uh, in terms of architecture, it covers the space of 300 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I, you know, up to mid-century modern, because right. we, we have some of those buildings in, in Scarborough. But um, it does allow some pushback. It's it's helpful as ill-defined as it is. Yeah. And we've constantly <laughs> said, so I would love a definition. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there is one, except I think there's a sort of a generally sort of acceptable thing that says, well, gables or yeah. coins. Uh, um, materials. Material, yeah. you know, materials, uh, particular yeah. materials. Uh, and New England is a a mill town or it's a colonial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all over the place. And it's the Supreme Court, I think, at one point said they know it when they see yes, it. Yes, the old obscenity. <laughs> and we know it. We know it when it's not. Right. Um, we have difficulty defining when it is, but it we, has the benefit kind of, of like being it. something that actually does have meaning. There aren't a lot of Southwest. I can yeah. picture something. But, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does have the dirty roof. Midwest. And I don't you know. I'm not sure what that means. Prairie. Prairie. Yeah, I was just thinking. Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright. I'm just like Googling and looking at images when I type in New England. And then I typed in contemporary, and I think there's like historical New England, right? And then there's the contemporary, which really don't look very similar. And so, I think that's where, probably to your point, New England is the 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 pants you're putting on. Mm -hmm. But as you look at each village, you're going to say we want historical New England, which yes. looks this way. <clears throat> contemporary, like in the downs, that looks this way. And I think right. it gives you flexibility. So it feels like. Again, when I would Google it, it just feels like it's pretty broad. Okay. Well, maybe we should strike traditional. Just say New England. Or traditional or contemporary. Right. Or yeah. historical yeah. and contemporary. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I got us off. No, this is, not, I'm just gonna say, this is why we've been talking about this since last June. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really am comfortable with traditional and contemporary because it runs the gamut. I mean, and you know, if we find that Ooh. that doesn't work, we can always strike it in the future when we do a village center. Mm -hmm. You know, th just because we do this work doesn't mean we're married to it forever. Mm -hmm. We can always adjust things. It's our suggestion to the council. I, I like the word historical. Historical versus traditional. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like this space standard for architecture is really pretty ready to go with a little bit of changes. Well, we finish on that one. He actually doesn't mention multi-use. I know. I'm going to add that okay. mixed use that's to that good. beginning. Yep, that's. I think it's on my next version. I'll cool. Call it. <laughs> um, and then we go into um, site layout, and this one again is just a really a um, consolidation. And so there's a purpose. Most of these things exist. I add, mm. it changed the purpose. The primary goal of the site plan review process is to produce attractive, functional, and pedestrian friendly commercial and multifamily in mixed use, use sites or mixed use that complement and conforms to both the natural and built environment. Again, this is just this all encompassing, feel good, sort of everything is great. Um, and then put in the pedestrian movement that we have from commercial. And so then we have applicability. So this applies to all commercial multifamily and mixed use constructed after the date um, and expansion. This wouldn't go to renovations because site layout is where the building is on the site. 
And we can't make them move the building sure. with a renovation. On a loop, loop is, and I should have brought uh, this area since I'm a lot There's another town in the village district um, in uh, Pine Point. Uh huh. The, uh, it's the old snow canning factory mm -hmm. and, and the area around there. Um, are, are, are we going to include that on this? Or, I, I mean, I live there, so it is. Yeah. But are we going to include that um, on the. What is it? And the reserve? We can. It was, yeah, could we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a few others. I actually, I think I have eight total. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, quite a few yeah. others. I'll and, put and, them. and I'm always hesitant to add that one because it means we get the cannabis kind of thing down there because that seems to be the home of most of our cannabis. Um, well, uh, that's already, I think that's, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's happened. Yeah. But it is its own town and village yeah, area. And, for sure. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then again, this doesn't apply to light yeah. industrial or industrial. And, and would we exempt all of the village residential districts we're intending here? No, it's just RF, R2, R3, R4, and R4A. And then what I'm saying, village yeah, residents has one, their yeah. own weird stuff. Okay. And so, so <laughs> for this exercise, I honestly just want to leave it in the village residential because they each have their own site layout. And, and that's what that I'm saying. So, so all yeah. of them will be exempted. Not just yes. the ones that were yes. earmarked in the last Yes. Second. Okay. I just wanted to call them out um, yep. for you guys so you would know that yep. that's why. Because they have very specific standards. Um, and so none of the setbacks have changed. That, no, in no. What nope. we're talking not changing okay. any setbacks. We're just saying that um, buildings shall be located as close to the front property line as possible. The majority of the parking located at the rear side. Again, this hasn't changed anything. Um, ADA, that's all the same. This is included just for your information so you would understand how setbacks and everything work. So some of this is for future exercise. Some of our zoning district setbacks contradict the ability to really do front facing buildings and everything because we have big setbacks. But again, as we go through the villages and the specific zoning in those areas, I think we can address this. So this is just for you to have for dinner conversation. Because <laughs> very exciting stuff. Or bedtime yes. reading. Yes. <laughs> um and you have it some and this again is information only i just wanted to give you an idea so like a, what it works so we have buffer yards and then we have foundation plantings how far away you start to get from the right away so you can sort of, sort of visualize that okay so definitions are existing you got the Black and white. You got came in last. That's you got okay. the black and white. Sorry. I'm colorblind. My, You're right. I'm colorblind. Anyway, I know. So, I was so. hoping that somebody we wouldn't have enough. My printer printed black and white ones in the middle. So. Um, and then we have side access location. Again, this is all just consolidation of information. So um, <clears throat> I know I'm the broken record on mixed use stuff. Um, is it appropriate to define what mixed use is here? And I, I say that because as I go through this and look at, for example, some of the parking area and um, and, and other things, mixed use might warrant having different standards mm -hmm. um, because you've got different types of pedestrians than you have in a pure commercial space, um, and you probably have you may have kids and things like that that you wouldn't necessarily have in a a, um, a, a drive through McDonald's or something like that. So, is it would it be appropriate here to define mixed use and allow that to then be used as a term to flow through or? Sure, I think it's already defined, but my, um, so our next project working on parking, mm -hmm. that's a great example of what we need yeah. to look at, right? Yeah, so exactly. how we can um, consider parking for these mix of uses and, and shared facilities and- mm -hmm. um, And whether on street parking comes Right, or not. right, yeah. all those things. And um, walkways yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So we'll make sure so. that the definition um, but there's some, after access. I get all this consolidation done, I don't know if you all realize each piece had a little definition section, but my <laughs> plan is to put all the definitions yeah. at the front together and yep. just to gather it. So there'll be a little bit more site plan or it's been yeah. piece by piece. We're just gathering. And that would be great. And, and, mm -hmm. and again, we've observed before and we observed the comprehensive planning process that Scarborough has never really had a mixed use concept. Right. So introducing that as a definition. <clears throat> and thinking about how that flows through with different impacts mm -hmm. for all these, I think would be a helpful yeah. reminder. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. And, and there's a few things that I think we'll just move to the waiver section like we did the others. 
they already exist. Um, and really, there's one other thing. Let's see. There's anything really. ADA parking. Again, all of this is really just the capturing of information. There's not a lot that we changed with this. Um, things that got taken out of parking lot and put into our landscaping standards. And then I would also put a pen in it for parking. We really need to talk about queuing for drive through lanes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have it defined. The planning board generally looks at it and we say, well, I think that works or that's not enough, but we really need to take a look at that, yeah. especially for um, specific uses. And for the maximum parking mm -hmm. too. Yes. Um, and so again, most of this is just a cleanup and deletion and consolidation, removing things to land, like snow storage got put in landscape standards. Um, you took out internal connections, that paragraph on page eight. Um, did, does that get talked about somewhere else that I'm not seeing? Uh, so you have <clears throat> um, commercial properties shall provide attractive, safe, functional walkways between the public right-of-way and the principal customer entrance on the site. At a minimum, walkways shall connect focal points of pedestrian activity. They should be five feet. And so it's a combination <laughs> of like three different things to get a good sentence. And then so the second one is straight. So it's the first paragraph, the blue and the black. <laughs> Okay. Above it, do you see? It's still there. It's just not. It's the defined way, so it's a five way. Okay. Is that you see it? It's hard to read when there's strikes and colors. I know, but it's the only way I can keep up with it. This yeah, way. I was just wanting to make sure that we don't discourage connectivity between sites. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's effective. Okay. So right there on, on where the chiropractic place is, for example, on Black Point Road uh, with, I um, can't remember the name of the building, but. Don't look at that, me, but I know what you're talking the, about. The, the, um, <laughs> the retirement, it's a retirement yeah. place, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I remember, I think I was on the board actually when the, reti the planning board, when the retirement place went in. Right. And at that time, it was stated in their approval, they had to allow for that connectivity to whatever was going to be built next door. Right. So that just seemed in, to make a whole lot of sense mm -hmm. because of curb cuts and, you know, being able to create a turn lane. So you're talking about, this is the internal walkways. You're talking about car connectivity, like shared access. Yes. Okay, so that's different. Um, so that is, because this is just a walk, making sure that we connect the building to the pedestrian to, to space the, on the right. I right. just want to make sure we don't physically lose connectivity between sites. Gotcha. No. Um, let's see, let's see here. Uh, Alan, uh, that, that, that question arose on the um, hotel on Mussey Road. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they ended up managing to negotiate the connection yeah. to the property next to them so that the exit is at a light. Right. But right. it's very helpful yes. to have that. Yep. So and the, the, the planning board does, yeah. uh, and, does and, try and make sure that. I just feel like we need to encourage that, that, not discourage it. No, so. we're always asking for that. So okay. that's, that's good. Um. <laughs> So as we go through these, would it be helpful for next time just to give you a no color, no strikes, final mm -hmm. version? This is what it's going to look like. This is yeah. what we talked about. Yeah. Yes. And then you guys can say yay or nay, and then we can yes. get it to ordinance committee, hopefully in April. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing on page 12, 12 it, you oh. me up page, it. page 12, <laughs> minor tweak is uh -huh. changing um, the second sentence, main entrance to public to be consistent oh. with your. Got it. Okay. And then I'll add um, all of the villages 
to mm -hmm. it. Yep. Um, talk about add the mixed use, historic and contemporary New England. And I think we'll be all set. I have a question. <clears throat> I'm sorry, on page 14 under pedestrian access. Uh -huh. And I know this is old language and your strike is, it says public sidewalks should be provided and you strike wherever possible throughout Scarborough's commercial areas. But the word should, should that be will? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll be stronger anytime anybody gets me. Yes, no. Okay. No, we're really moving forward with sidewalks and it's, it's, the timing has been perfect. I know Angela and I, when we go through the development review process, process thou shall provide sidewalks. Um, the, and exactly. so, yeah, we're going to adapt <laughs> yeah. code at new yeah. I read it first. Getting rid of the wherever possible language is good, but even stronger is great. So. Yeah, okay. And I would suggest doing that if you find something. Any other should not. Good job. We, we have a constant fight on sidewalks. And oh, yeah, we that's why I'm saying. constantly say, Provide them. Well, we don't see them, or we can't. Or that's why we're going to say, have it connect. "Will you will you will you want this?" This bill? is the, you will. I will say the most important <laughs> thing out of probably this is the the hard nose. Yeah, you have to. I, there's no, no mm -hmm. you know, and maybe. Um, well, this is a different topic, but yeah, we're excited about that. I'm uh, going back to page 14 very briefly for the pedestrian access for Gene Marie. You just was that that opening sentence or two in green. Uh -huh. uh, it, can you summarize what you're attempting to say there? I mean, it sounds very nice. I, I it, it takes me down a road about why sidewalks are important. But I can delete it all. It's just, we sidewalks are lovely connections between, it's just, it just means what it says. Okay. There's, there. It's not just about. I think the other language. Uh, is there a purpose to it? It feeds into the vision. It, it just. It really does. It's just to say, <laughs> this is why thou shall provide sidewalks yeah. because okay. of all. There's more right. ammunition. Everything. It's yeah. just saying we need all these things. It's, it's vision uh, language. Well, and I do some more. Yes. Yes. I, I like it because I've been in much of the day this year. The lack of sidewalks mm -hmm. is a big dissatisfier for the community. So I think this just reemphasizes that. Yeah, and it's, I feel bad to be excited about a negative. <laughs> we were like, yes. I, I don't have a problem with it. It just, just seemed verbose in yes. a certain way. So. Okay, great. Um, Steve, so that. Can I do one thing? Sure. <laughs> Robin, you've been very quiet. Have I missed anything <laughs> that you wanted to comment on? No, I'm I'm good, but thank you for asking. I appreciate it so much, Alan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. All right, that's all I have for that one. And if you find any other little tweaks, feel free to email me. Um, you can just email me and say, hey, Autumn on page 14, this word should be this. That's a great way to get that feedback to me too. Okay. It just as a side note, I'm waiting for the first time a container house comes. <laughs> is proposed in Scarborough. The shipping container? The yeah, shipping yeah. container. That's the new... Mm -hmm. That's the new graded mm -hmm. flat in some yeah, places. Yeah. Or affordable housing uh, or homeless housing. Right. Or commercial. I've had a mm -hmm. commercial operation come and wanted to use the container as well. Yeah. Here's one. Let's see if it, but this is the one. Right. Okay, so... <clears throat> The next item on our agenda would be public comment. Should anyone from the public be on? I do not show anyone online. Okay. Um, then I will ask for staff updates. All right. So our um, vulnerability assessment uh, that Robin, are you on the hook for the vulnerability assessment? Yes. Steering okay. committee. <laughs> um, that went out we have uh, picked a consultant so we're negotiating the contract so we'll get that kicked off um probably in the beginning of march and then our open space master plan we received rfqs we have two interviews next week um and so that'll get kicked off probably in march as well and so we're pretty excited about that and then we also um what else is happening staff updates eric can you think of anything else 
Transportation master plan. Transportation master plan. Um, <clears throat> we're actually meeting I'm meeting with Steve Landry, um, town engineer, Angela Blanchett, myself, and our um, consultants are meeting with Steve Landry from the state uh, after this meeting at 10 to go over some discussion about Haggis and Payne Road. So oh, we're pretty good. excited about some, um, some ads for that. And then we're still gathering pedestrian destination information from the transportation committee to roll that into that plan. So that should be coming out probably late spring. Um, Does the vulnerability assessment, I heard the starting time of March, does mm -hmm. it have a goal? Uh, I believe it's, I want to say July of next year. It'll be a, July of 25. I think so. I, I think so. Yeah, Don't you. quote me. That could be mixing the two, but I think that's. Thank you. I think that's it. It's a little bit longer than the open space. I think the open space is just under a year. Okay. Um, Bless so yeah, there'll be a lot of public meetings and information going out. We also received new floodplain map designation, oh, yeah. um, and we have a new floodplain map ordinance that has to be in place by June 20th. Yeah. So that'll start to roll out and in public information. Um, and I'm anticipating we'll probably try to have a couple of public hearings through yeah. council and the planning board will have a public hearing. So I actually have a meeting Monday to make sure we get that plan. So you'll probably see that mm -hmm. in news articles and things. Um, and I have another question. There's nothing nothing the council needs to do other than approve them. Right, right. So right. It's, it's we, a, it's we a can't, PR. Yes, it's just to make sure everybody is aware. Yes, we can't do anything to change it. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know if we could say stuff it and we aren't I doing it, but I, I don't think, think that would, would be, be good. Very yeah. And if we <laughs> don't have it adopted, we, <clears throat> our residents lose some right. insurance. Autumn, are the new flood maps available online? They're not. Oh. Uh, we have the, we don't have the final final, although I don't think they're going to change, but we have the 2017. <laughs> they're on our town um, art GIS maps. Right, you can so you see them. That's what we have. We have not, okay. we, in the memo, it says, we're going to get them to you. You got to adopt them. It's like, so, <laughs> uh, any day. For when we're going to have waterfront property? Or? Yeah. yeah. We do yeah. have the information on the specific properties that changes were made to. And so that's what we're really trying to figure out how to get that out to residents, yeah. too, so they can see what that means on an individual basis. But, but when you but, click on the GS maps for individual lots, does it indicate anything like this lot is located in or? Such and such floodplain zone. Uh, I believe so. If you are in that specific layer in the mapping, you should be able to see it. There's also a state of Maine website link that I think is better because it tells you the panel that is proposed to be changed. Ah. And so we'll probably once we set up the web page for this, we'll put that on there too. Uh, but I think that map is uh, might be a little easier to get to um, because it does reference the panel number. Right. I think that's all I have. Um, I just wanted to say that I forwarded to you and Alan the town council goals so you can forward them the to okay. LRPC when you get them. Okay. Thank you. Eric, anything? Uh, nothing. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go to members. Peter? Nothing specific. No. It's been pretty quiet at the zoning board. Um, yeah, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. Uh, Marvin? I don't have any update on transportation and otherwise, no. Okay. I, I haven't heard anything. No, at this point, report. it's the master plan piece and the consultant and trying to, to find that out because we, and the bike subcommittee um, has made some specific requests, but I'm we haven't had any updates on that, so. Mm -hmm. Rick? Um, nothing really, only the land trust, which really is technically not so connected to this, continues to work with the town on the mm -hmm. 30 by 30 Yay. effort. Okay. Portia. Rachel. Um, the planning board is chugging along with the monthly uh, meetings, and that seems to be working. Uh, we, we have had an interesting application uh, of the rugby club, which um, well, it, it raised a, a question of what I would call family cemeteries. Yeah. Uh, and some of the older buildings, some of the older houses, um, some of which are no longer no longer up, just know where they were. 
you know, relatives were buried in the backyard, not necessarily in a historic cemetery, right. but simply in the 1800s, mm -hmm. back 40, uh, yeah. with maybe a, a, a granite boulder, <laughs> um, not necessarily headstones, maybe a wooden cross. Uh, and that question came up because there is an old building uh, on the, the property uh, that's, I think they've bought uh, the rugby, the Portland rugby, rugby club. So what kind of, how, how is that handled? Uh, we did it on kind of on the fly, the historic Scarborough Historic Preservation uh, committee had a representative there, um, but it wasn't, it was kind of like, well, we think there is, but we don't know. So I told them they had to basically do another sweep to see if there were, were graves. Um, what we've done in the past is we've been clear that there is something there and we have had the developer or the new owners, for instance, the Gallery Boulevard Apartments, um, set aside the land, have some access, have a sign, you know, have kind of some protection around where the graves are. Um, and there's a state law regarding maintenance of those graves <coughs> or whatever, too. Even if it's not an official cemetery, if they're just grand. Or even if well, it, it remains depends. found during construction, too, that kicks right. off the whole process as well. Right. And, and if it's military, if there are any veterans buried in the cemeteries, there's other rules and... Yeah, we say where there where there is a cemetery, clear. That's clear, exactly. Yeah, that's right. clear. But where I know this, these this where, yeah. where we have like a, family, a, tra a, a traditional yeah. tale that there is yeah. a burial there. Right. So I, you know, what I told them to do is basically take the ground penetrating sonar right. and try it, to try it again, right, and, and see. And then at some point we're just going to have to say no evidence. You know, off you go. Yeah. Um, but it was it, it was a different a, a different thing that that came before us. Not something I <laughs> think that you can necessarily put in the ordinance. Although we do have the uh, the section uh, a section of the ordinance that talks about historical preservation issues and a sentence that says the. The, the developer needs to do some due diligence to right. ensure that there is not a family <clears throat> cemetery there. And I'm calling it family because yeah. nobody registered it. Right. Right. Um, that that would be helpful. But we kind of came to a, a, a way to, we hope, um, helps the developer and the town and the planning board do some due diligence on whether there are remains there or not. Sounds as though you could put something in the zoning ordinance. Well, it's possible. It, it might be just in the section on historic preservation, yeah. a sentence there, rather than in the design standards. Yeah, well, there is a whole body of statutory law. Yeah. I think where that particular applicant is at, they've reached out to all the state agencies they can find, and they're basically, if we find something, we'll stop work, and then we have to... but. We can't find anything, and right. there's no record of anything. I know. Um, so. It's just hearsay or yeah, tradition or right. whatever. So I, they have, in, in effect, they, in effect, did most of the due diligence. Mm -hmm. We just asked one one final time. Yeah. you got to find where the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, well, that's what we had to do in Rhode Island, but that's um, that's different. I have a question. For different there. reasons. Yeah, different reasons. I, I, oh, I have a I just got that. general question about <laughs> your changing of your scheduling of your meetings to mm -hmm. to coordinate with the conservation commission is what I've heard, uh, or vice versa. Um, in the past, because we had every three weeks, there were times when the conservation commission and the planning board met the same night. But that was once or twice a year, I think. But yes, yeah, so we changed planning board to go to the once a month. So we could have the DRC, and I have to tell you, we we did our second DRC um, Wednesday, and it's extremely helpful. Yeah. Uh, the planning board, you know, we have staff comments say these two parking spaces are not going to work. What are you thinking? And instead of getting the planning board and saying that <clears throat> during that meeting, there, oh, no problem, we'll put those here, you know. And so we can just say we've already resolved these. So that's why we changed planning board. Okay. And then conservation commission moved so they could actually provide comments 
to planning board if necessary uh, or if warranted. And then what Eric and I have done is created a really simple, when we get an application, are there wetlands and all the other great things on the site or are they next to the site? And if those are yeses, Conservation Commission, um, let's talk about those. And then I have a standing part of their meeting to discuss those if they have yes. Mm -hmm. So that's our plan. Uh, it's still in the infancy stages too, but I think we're, we're really close to getting that to work too. Mm -hmm. One of the um, things that Councilor Shoup shared uh, this week too is that the appointments committee has been discussed having a liaison from the planning mm -hmm. board to the Conservation Commission potentially. Ah. So that could be another to connect the two bodies a little bit more. I would I would urge no. Yeah, there's there's don't even go down that road yet. There's some you guys are going down that road. I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I <clears throat> we have represented on the planning board uh <clears throat> just about the, all of the important committees, you know, the sustainability, transportation, um people who've been on the ZBA. We've got somebody who's on has been on the Conservation Commission. I've been on the Conservation Commission. I'm on the Conservation Land Board. We've got people oh, all all, yeah. all over the place and to say, and now you must add another meeting. That's that's what it comes to. To volunteer. It, yeah. yeah, to to volunteers adding another another meeting. There's only one liaison. Two, excuse me, two liaisons right now, and that's to this committee, and that's to transportation, and that's to ordinance. That's mm -hmm. through that's through ordinance, ordinance that's yeah. right? All right, I don't want to forget Robin, <clears throat> and thanks. you are um, muted. Oh no, you're not. Uh thanks. Um, I'm actually inquiring about an update on the um, height of buildings that we discussed last time. Is there a counselor that's writing a counselor corner or or? Was that discussed with it's the ordinance council and what are the outcomes and uh, where did it get left? Because, so, you know, again, <laughs> this is a real missed opportunity. So, Robin, it's on the ordinance committee agenda for next week. Um, Six o'clock, Valentine's Day. Do you know if that, <laughs> that agenda is published yet? Because it should Yes, have, it is. So it's online and you can see the staff memo and the backup. Um, but yeah, that discussion will happen then. Robert right there, I think there'd be a discussion doing a counselor's corner on that and, and, and more of a more than just a public meeting PR push on that one. So what I what I can do next week at the communications <coughs> committee meeting, we're planning the next few counselor corners as well as the next counselor corner live. So I can bring that discussion to that group. I know we probably have something planned, or I know Councillor Campbell wants to do an article. I don't know on what topic. There will likely be a budget article, but I think there's one space where there will be opportunity. And Bridging Marie, maybe we can align. I know you just did one, but if this is going to ordinance, this might be an opportunity for you to write another one that I can recommend it if you're okay with, with that. And with all due respect, I understand that Councillor Hamill was at our meeting last time as a um as a citizen, not necessarily a councillor representative. So that's correct. Uh, if if this is if he is against the building height, I strongly recommend that a counselor also publish an accompanying document for someone who is for that. Um, mm -hmm. Because we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here and not allow uh, that. Yeah, we need to find out what he's writing his article on. Counselor yeah. Saker asked him, she'll, she'll know next week. Okay. She asked to, to get a sense what he wants to write on. I don't know, I don't think it's this topic, it could be something else. Um, but again, I think there's, <clears throat> I can, I will carry that message forward and I'll let Jean Marie and the committee know yeah. what comes out of communications and what our plan might look like. Yeah. And Robin, anything? what, I yeah. don't want to say what may happen, but it may get to ordinance committee and it's taken at a very lower level uh, so we can provide some flexibility. And then the discussion that's really important to be had roll into that village conversation, right? right. Because it's all about Oak Hill. And is this height appropriate in Oak Hill? And right. how does that work? So I don't suspect that it will get moved at any higher, probably than a bare minimum, I would say. That's just my guess. So, because I think that's such a good conversation to have. I think it was a hot topic. Mm -hmm. And so it really might should roll into that village 
where there's so many other things. And then we need to make sure that we do do the other side of it, the impervious cover restrictions right. and the building cover restrictions. And maybe we've already looked at parking. So we know, I I just, I wanna add that. I don't think it'll get lost, but I think it might end up being different. So the staff, the staff memo though is online so that we can take a look mm -hmm. at it. And does it, yeah. does it say in there that Councillor Hamill was there as a public representative? It includes the minutes, yes, and their excerpts okay. from both discussions in December and January. That was the easiest way for me to see. Because without him there, I think this 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 committee's recommendations would have been very different without Councillor um, Hamill here last time. So oh, I don't sorry, wanna, I don't want to excuse me. I don't want to make a bigger deal than it is, but it's a big deal. Yeah, I, I didn't get that. Robin, I mean, I've I know, maybe you, I know. I know you didn't, Marvin. So, I, and I don't want to rehash it, but it's a big deal. No, I, I did. I, I didn't get uh, uh, Don Hamill's influence, <laughs> as you're at least as I'm hearing you say it. So that that's all I'm com commenting on. I certainly remember the meeting, and I will respectfully disagree, sir. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I just didn't get it. That's all. I'll, um, actually, what, 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 are you all set, Robin? All right. Uh, one, one thing. I actually didn't realize um, Don was there as a member of the public last, last time. That's my under, my understanding yeah. is he came and put himself forward as a town council, <laughs> which I and I apologize that I was unable to make the meeting because I had a. a a conflict that I had to be somewhere else because I can assure you that I would have made it very clear that he's a member of the public. He was not a town councilor, but that didn't happen. It's over. It's done. No, no, no. I'm, and... I'm, saying, I'm, I'm making this point for a couple of things. First, first off, I didn't realize, I'm not sure he put himself forward as a member of the public or as a councilor explicitly either one. I, I, right. I, he would just showed up. Um, and, which was he, and was he sitting at the table? Yes. Yeah. yes. See, and he shouldn't have been sitting at so, the table, but that was my <clears> point. But that's partly place. my fault, too, because I did not realize that he was not. In fact, I thought John was the lead, no, quite no. honestly. And that, and that <laughs> was last uh, Don I was, there. <laughs> was, you know, the standby. Yeah. So and that's a very but good that's point. Right. That's my he issue. was well, sitting at the table, and if that and that is sort of the distinction. But no, exactly. I, I, was the, 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 the I think what did mention was that he was I there. Just as as a I, public member. Did. Whatever. So, right. Whatever. So just. The well, that's the minutes are approved at this point. Call. We're moving forward. Very specific. Moving all right. forward. I am, good. Yeah. We're. I. All right. We're moving on. I wanted to make one comment and. I will tell you that it's not directly related to this committee. However, I did want people to know that something is being worked on. Um, I am actually am chairing a, a, I don't know if I want to call it a committee or not official committee, um, but for about the last year now, we have been working on some form of safety, who arrangement who is hang on regarding um a safe election process oh well, right so there's a i've been bringing this up for several years now um to the people who run the elections um that we needed to do something in terms of uh, in the event of some kind of an event but and i'll leave it at that uh, but uh, this could also pertain to if there's fire in the building or somebody calls in a bomb threat or, mm. you know, we have something worse physically occur uh, during the election process. So we are getting close to having a guideline developed um, that will give us directions on what we should do in the event that an event actually occurs during the election. So on that committee are police, fire, facilities, the school department, uh, people from the, uh, from the town hall, Toady, Kristen, uh, and myself and Bill. 
uh, Bill Penley. So Bill and I are the, the wardens at the election. So we're putting a plan together. We hope it's going to be somewhat solidified before June for the June election. Mm -hmm. If not, definitely it will be ready for the November election, which is the goal, mm -hmm. the ultimate goal. So I just want you to know something's happening in the background regarding that. Um, we actually <laughs> could be the bellwether for the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. The state of Maine has nothing. They have nothing. So they are waiting to see what we develop. Um, and we'll go from there. But I just wanted to let folks know that something is going on to try to help the right. citizens of Scarborough be somewhat safer uh, during the election process. Who's, who's spearheading it? Is, that, is there an election, election commission that's doing it? Or is it just... I, I've been driving it. Okay. And through Toady and now through Kristen as well, the assistant town manager, uh, town clerk. So, and fortunately, we finally got some traction right around last April mm -hmm. and have been trying to push through this. So, as people who were front and center at the election, you got to care about safety. Well, yeah. I look at it from this standpoint my responsibility, I am not supposed to leave that room as long as there's a ballot in it. Exactly. Yeah, which the doesn't exactly make me feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, no, it's so, true. We do have a district-wide emergency management team, and it sounds like you have the same people on that team. So, is this a like almost? It, it almost sounds like to me it's like a specific scenario that that entire group is involved in to make right. sure that and we're trying to group. utilize those resources and i can't mm -hmm. forget uh i can't remember the lieutenant's name i i, I know it's scott but i think i can't oh, remember his last name i'm sorry Juan. Juan. yes thank yeah you. i was gonna say it begins with v yeah. <laughs> yeah so he is on the committee and driving it from the from oh, the police side doing a great job so is, is he the person who spoke at the goals uh, that, no, that would not. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I don't want to that's belabor. Fine. I just want you to know something's happening. Um, right? Yeah, and we're, and we're doing the same thing with town council. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. This. I. I just wanted to mention. You may already have done this, but there's an agency called the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is a division of the Department of Homeland Security. And they've already done an audit for, they came and did an audit for Westbrook. So I can send you that information if you're You've already had it done. Great. In fact, awesome. the report, the report actually uh, came, I think, to Toady Tuesday. Awesome. So she's Good seen work. the report. And at our meetings in uh, January, Lieutenant Vaughn basically went through <laughs> what that process was. He was part of the whole thing. So we Thank you for doing got some that. good stuff. Yeah. Um, I forgot staff. No, no. So sure. if you would, Karen. Sure. So the one thing that that um, SEDCO is going to be reviewing at the next meeting, by the way, since Rick and uh, <laughs> um, Alan are both there, um, we've been working with uh, the Finance Committee on updating and looking at the fiscal impact model. And... <laughs> The reason that matters or, or has a relationship to um, uh, this committee is that we approach it in the way that says land use matters when you're looking at fiscal impact. And so that's what we're doing is working on doing that update. Um, our, our assumptions are really rooted in um, a project's individual land use and how that affects both costs and uh, revenues. So we're continuing to refine that. Um, we'll be doing that at the next finance committee. We started that process last night. Um, and that's really what you guys are going to be working on next week. OK. Uh, Robin, oh, Robin. Yeah, Karen, are you factoring in um, the benefits and ecosystem services associated in whatever algorithm that you're working on for land use revenues? No. So so no, the fiscal impact is really about um, line services, line departments, um, not about capital infrastructure. So capital is not in included in that. Um, and if you're asking about 
indirect, like it's not making any assumptions about the impact of a project on its neighbors or flooding. Uh, you're right, it's not. It's strictly dollars and cents. Um, we need this this many fire police kids to educate that are being generated directly by this project. I'm running short on time, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to ask you if you have anything for us. I don't have anything other than I look forward to being back and harassing you guys. Good. <laughs> Keeping you enriching us. <laughs> and, and and it's very helpful having things come through ordinance because I'm ordinance chair also now. Yeah. Um back doing that, that um when it goes through long range planning, it makes it so much easier because it's been vetted and you guys have talked about it, and then it comes to ordinance and it's vetted again, and then it goes to council and gets vetted again. So anyway, thank you. Good. We need to do a better job. And I think one of the things, and actually John and I had a discussion after the last meeting about the old process we used when we were on CPIC. And I think we're gonna look for opportunities to right. return to that when necessary. Right. So, and well, that was a missed opportunity over this. Yeah, uh, can you give some more color on that? What do you mean in the old? You were part of that exactly. process. Yeah. so. So what it, I know what you're talking about. Then. Yeah. So what it amounted to was when we had a situation where we were changing the zoning. And let me back up even a little bit more. Rick was very much part of this process as well. But we did a lot of public outreach. Yeah. The, the 2006 comp plan was yeah. almost entirely, you know, around zoning changes. Right. Uh, around town. So when we were working on a zoning change for Pine Point, for example, we would come up with something that we felt met the intent of the plan, brought it to the people at Pine Point, sat down with them in a meeting, let them review what we were talk, contemplating making for changes, getting their feedback and input, went back as a committee, CPIC, which was the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, and then taking their input, we would rework it again to include as much of their input as we could, yet still meet the intent of what the comp plan wanted mm -hmm. and would go back to the public again and say, here's what we've come up with. Based on your feedback, here's how we've modified things. Mm -hmm. And with just about without exception, when it went to the town council, we had people from Pine Point coming up and saying, yeah, we've seen this plan, we like right. it, raise your hand. Yeah. And got, was highly effective when we tried to make changes around town. So for example, when we were working on what recently now has gone to ordinance um, with the height change, that we were looking at at Oak Hill, we missed an opportunity to go out and meet with the public and the business people of that area to tell them what the intent was, give their feedback and repeat the process. So I think that as we do things moving forward, we should take that opportunity and try to use it because I think the end result is more effective. Well, I think what we talked about last time was the idea of going to the working yeah. committee with a proposal that would generate discussion that the town would could that, that both the ordinance committee and the town council could use as a as a if you will not a starter for 10 but as a as an initiator of debate um and and because what i worry about uh, if i'm doing that is you know the planning department has a need for for guidance and for for, for, for and what you're adding there is for significant changes three or four months of of review um, before we would then take something to the ordinance committee. Whereas the ordinance committee is a good public forum and town council is a good public forum to bring those concerns of the, of the community there. And that keeps our role more of, a, of as a, a focused body of citizen experts or or citizen dilettantes maybe um, <laughs> that, 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 can, that, that can advise 
the, the ordinance committee and, 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 and steer the ordinance committee in its discussions with the public and ultimately and the committee. So I, I hear what you're saying. I can understand how that would lead to a bunch of people at the town council raising their hands and saying yes, but it does add three to four months to the process. It does. That sort of thing. Yep. And, and I'm not sure that that's the best use of our time or the best delay uh, approach for the planning um, department. And I would just like to offer that the public participation process will happen with these village exercises. Right. And again, that's why I think once this gets to ordinance committee, ordinance committee may say, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but they may say, hey, let's not do this. Let's deal with it later with village. Yeah. Or let's add this little fix that gives you a little bit of flexibility, which was really the question. Uh, the question wasn't, should we change the height to TBC? This committee saw a need and a desire to do that, but that was a totally different ask than what was brought in December from staff. And so ordinance committee really is the place, I think to your point, and then you can kick it back and it becomes that public. Yeah. I can't take everything to public participation. No, I get it. But I do think, well, you'll see a lot more with the village process because yep. we'll have a facilitator mm -hmm. and we'll have those. And that'll okay. be similar to the those, And that'll yeah. be really okay. similar. Yeah. I think that'll be okay. follow that. And, and it's focused. Yeah. It's not yeah. a general town-wide exactly. thing. It's focused it's on, focused. hey, let's get the Oak Hill people. Right. I mean, it's that's focused. Yeah. The, that's so it, the big difference. Is and, yeah. a, and a working session versus a public hearing exactly. or public comment. Yeah. And I think that's where um, CPEC was very successful. It's like sitting yeah. on the yeah. table, mm -hmm. roll up your sleeves, have a general yeah. conversation, mm -hmm. not three minutes of testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. And then, okay, I'm gonna. We're, uh, we're over. Total, oh, fine, okay. on, I, I think it makes a total. The village conversations will definitely stir us in that direction. We should all start thinking about what that means when we look at the residential districts. Yep. Because that becomes a more general town wide. They're, they're, they're giant, blocky sort of discussions. Mm -hmm. So just should think about that for 18 months' time when we hit the residential districts. Okay. John, I don't want to leave you out here. Uh, I maybe just two quick things. Traffic calming policy. That's something that staff has been working on. Actually, yeah, transportation on um, 27. And so that's just one of those policies that I know a lot of residents are gonna have interest in. Yeah. You mean one section of town? No, I think I think a lot of people, like a more more and more people keep coming can we up. Can we reduce can we reduce the speed limit in front of my house? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta get 10 signatures, apparently. Once the I can do that. And then you can <laughs> submit it and you'll review it. So I think that's great that staff is actually trying to, you know, make a more official approach so that people know what to expect. Like um, the other thing was the cost to serve work mm -hmm. that Karen presented yesterday at the finance committee. I think especially as we go through this long-term process to look at the villages, that model could be something mm -hmm. that I know ordinance council, as it goes through the process, would want to know, okay, as changes happen, what is the fiscal impact? Mm -hmm. And again, it's not, to make like that's not going to drive the decision it's one component and again as we look at everything really looking holistically at all the choices we're making and saying well what does that mean fiscally for the town so i think i think that will just be an interesting thing to weave into the process with the consultant as it goes forward and we have the final model in place so that we can use that as a tool to help with consistent decision making all right thank you uh it's now 9 35 Chair would in a motion, entertain a motion. Both second. Thank you, Peter and Marvin. Any discussion? Just, Seeing, oh, I, sorry. Go right okay. ahead. So our next meeting is March 8th. We will, pending any additional changes, we'll be downstairs in public safety like normal. Uh, and so I will bring you all final drafts of what we talked about today for architecture and site layout. I will also bring you... Um, maps and a little summary of all the villages that we could possibly look at um, and ask for your input on what would be our number one focus. By the time we will have met, I will already have submitted um, a generic village statement in my CIP request, but I'd like to bring the focus back from you guys. And then um, I'll also give you just a dump of what we have for parking right now because that'll be what we'll work on next does that sound good okay i have a question is it possible to send out the village list and maybe it's not possible uh 10 days a week in advance and get feedback from the group uh about which village to start with so you can be prepared with that information is that putting the cart before
for the board. So. I, I don't think I can commit. I mean, it'll get sent out with the agenda, which is usually a week in advance, but that's about as soon as I can do it. Well, the, the decision to decide which village to start with, if we make that decision at the next meeting, mm -hmm. can we then start or will we have to then? It has to go to the, I have to get funding for it through the CIP Got process. It. it wouldn't kick in until the July 1st, 2025 budget. Mm -hmm. So, and and I'm already working on a software implementation for planning. So it probably wouldn't kick in and, and vulnerability and open space and transportation. So it probably wouldn't kick in until next January. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, next yeah. January. I don't have the bandwidth. There's just, yeah, just yeah, the yeah, name. <laughs> July 2025. July 1st 20. is the beginning of the 2025 budget. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put it in to get approved. But in theory, I, I can't That's kick it right. off until 2025. Real. <clears throat> I wrong. Sorry. <laughs> So, all in favor? Thank you. All. I see that to be unanimous. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you all.